we want to answer a question in our study this evening. And that is, is Jesus Christ Michael the Archangel? Jude verse 9 says this, Yet Michael the Archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Didst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. Here is this character in the Bible, Michael. This is the only place that is referred to him as the archangel. The word archangel is mentioned twice in the Bible. And this character, this being, is contending with the devil. And in Revelation, this character is mentioned in verse 12, in chapter 12, of verse 7, and it says, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. So this character, the scripture reveals that this character is, in, is an intense battle against the devil. And as we look at the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 10 and verse 13, it says, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days, but lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. This is the angel dealing with the king of Persia, and there was some difficulties. And this character comes to help. And this character, Michael, is said to be one of the chief priests. Now that word one is Ikhad, which simply means first. So when you run a race and you come first, what number are you? You're number one. So this Michael here, the word translates that he is the first of the chief princes. He is the highest. And that consi is consistent with Jude 9 where he is the archangel. The word arch means chief. The chief of the angels. So here this being from scripture is at the height of the armies of heaven. And if you read in verse 21 of Daniel 10, it says, But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth, and there is none that holdeth with me in these things but Michael your prince. So here this Michael being is involved with the other angels in saving man, but as the chief of them all, as the head of them all. And it goes on to say, Michael, your prince. So this being that involve, is involved in the warfare against the devil, who helps us, helps Daniel, helps the other angels, we want to understand who he is. Now Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1 talks of a time in the future, in the near future, a time where Michael shall stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to the same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that is to be found written in the book. Right here is a last conflict going to take place. And in this conflict, Michael is there. And he stands for humanity. He is fighting for humanity. And the people that are found written in the Lamb's Book of Life will be delivered in that time. So this character, Michael, has a huge input to the plan of salvation. He is number one, the archangel, the chief. And he has helped in the past, in the times of Daniel, and he will help in the future to come. Now we're going to go through the scriptures, the Old Testament, to understand who this key angel is. Now I don't want your mind to be disturbed by this word angel. When we hear a word... We often put whatever we've learnt of our heads on that word. 
So when, I, when we say angel, we think of a seraphim or a cherubim, correct? The word angel interpret is, is angelos, which simply means messenger. And when you study Revelation and you do a study of the Bible, that there are angels of the churches. The leaders of the churches are called angels, the messengers. messengers. And we also learn that Paul was received, the Apostle Paul was received like an angel because he was the messenger. So that is what the word means, messenger. That's all. So let us not get hung up over the word angel. So let us look there in Genesis 16 and verse 7. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness. Who found her? The angel of the Lord. And then in verse 13, and she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, Thou God, seest me. So the angel comes and talks to her and she calls back and responds to this angel and says, Thou God, seest me. Now let us look at the story of Abraham. Genesis chapter 22, verse 11 and 12. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. Now think about that. Who was Abraham sacrificing to? God? And the angel comes and tells him, don't do it. I see that you fear God because you haven't withheld this sacrifice from me. It continues in verse 15. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. Who is talking? The angel of the Lord called out and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heavens and as the, as, as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemy, and in thy seed shall all all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Who spoke that? The angel of the Lord spoke to Abraham. And in speaking to Abraham, he said, I will bless thee and I'll multiply thee. Now, how does the apostle read this text? Let's look in Acts chapter 3 and verse 25. Here is Peter, one of the apostles. And he says, Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Who was saying that? This is the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying. And then he quotes the text that the angel of the Lord had just said. So if we read it as it reads, you see an interchange with the angel of the Lord and God, or the angel of the Lord and the Lord. And that's capital L-O-R-D, Jehovah. And then we read in Genesis 28 and verse 19, now, this is the story of Jacob, and he called the name of that place Bethel. And then in verse 20, and Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in his way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Who is Jacob making this vow to? To God? 
Jacob was in Bethel and he was making the vow to God. Now when we read in Genesis 31, 11 to 13, And the angel of God spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob, and I said, Here am I. And he said, Lift up now thine eyes, and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring-straked, and speckled, and grizzled. For I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowest a vow unto me. Now arise, get thee out from this land, and return unto the land of thy kindred. Who is speaking? The angel of the Lord says, I am the God of Bethel. You had made a vow to me. Here is this messenger. Angel means angelos, messenger. The messenger of the Lord was talking to Jacob. And he says that I am the God of Bethel. Now we read, and we probably know the story, where Jacob wrestled with the angel. And as Jacob wrestled with the angel, he said, I have seen God face to face. And as he wrestled with the angel, he asked the name. And did he get a reply to his question? He didn't get a reply. He didn't get a reply, but he got a name change. The angel changed the name of Jacob. Do you know who changed the names of the apostles? Do you know who changed the name of Paul? Do you know who is going to give a new name to the saints? Here is this angel that wrestled with Jacob and changed his name. Now through Jacob's experience, he talks to God. He calls out to the Lord and I want to draw your attention to how he addresses God. And we can see this in Genesis 48 and verse 15 and 16. And here Jacob is blessing his sons. And as he's blessing his sons, he's actually calling upon God to bless them. And he says in verse 15, And he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads and let my name be named on them in the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. What does the patriarch Jacob call God? He's saying, Lord God. He's talking to God. God, the angel that has preserved me. Bless the lads. Let us go to the story of Moses. The story of Moses. And you'll find that this being that appears to the patriarchs of old is none other than Jesus Christ. Exodus chapter 3, verse 2 to 6. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, Moses, in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And then if you read verse 4, And when the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here am I. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father and the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Who was in the bush? The angel of the Lord. And as this unfolded, What name did he say he was? 
He says, what name should I tell the children of Israel that you've sent me? What name should I use? What, what are you called? And you read this in verse 13 and 14. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and say unto them, The God of thy fathers has sent me unto you. And they shall say, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me. Now when we read the New Testament, Jesus Christ, talking to the Jews, says in John chapter 8, verse 57 and 58, Then said the Jews unto him, Jesus, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. So putting line upon line, precept upon precept, the being that appeared to Moses was Jesus Christ. But the name Jesus Christ wasn't given to him until his birth in Bethlehem. You will call him Jesus. Before, he is the messenger of the Lord. And was, he mes was Jesus Christ the messenger of the Father? He said to Philip, I have been so long and how, don't you know the Father? I'm coming to reveal the Father to you. And so we see two lessons here. That this angel, this messenger of the Lord, is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is God. The I Am. Now we look at Exodus 13 verse 21 and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud. Who was in the cloud? The Lord and led them the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. So as the Lord was traveling, he led them to the point of the Red Sea. And then we know the story, the Red Sea was there and the armies of Egypt were coming. And this captain of the hosts of the Lord, the one that fights the battles for humanity. The enemy is approaching the Israelites. And it says in Exodus 14 verse 19, And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. So we see that the Lord, Jehovah, drew them out with a cloud and when he brought them where he was he then went behind them but the bible says it was the angel of the lord that went behind them because these two characters is the same person the bible is interchanging and it does it all the way through so we can understand if we would study our bibles some of these answers Now, briefly, let us look at Balaam. Now, Balaam was met by who? Who met Balaam? Was it an angel? The angel of the Lord met Balaam. And we read there in Numbers 22, verse 35, And the angel of the Lord said unto Balaam, Go with the men, but only the word that I shall speak unto thee, that thou shalt speak. He's going to give Balaam the words. It was the angel of the Lord said this. Now when we read the next chapter, when this event actually is fulfilled in Numbers 23, verse 4 and 5, and God met Balaam. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth. And said, and so on, you know the story. Can you see the interchange? The angel of the Lord, and the Lord did it, and the angel of the Lord, and God, and the angel of the Lord, and the I am. But there are still people who doubt. So let us look at Judges chapter 2 and verse 1. And the angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bokchim and said, I made you to go up 
out of Egypt. And I have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. Who had the covenant with them? The angel said, I will never break my covenant with you. Let's look at Malachi chapter 3 verse 1. Behold, I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me. So there was a messenger that was prepare the way. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant. There's that word angelos again. The messenger of the covenant, the angel of the covenant. Whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Let us turn to Judges 13, 15 to 22. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee until we have made ready a kid for thee. If we just jump down to verse 17. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, what is thy name, that when thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honour? And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? The name is secret. It's just referred to as the angel of the Lord, the Lord God. These names that aren't so personal. It's a little secret. And you know that word secret is the same word as wonderful why do you want my name seeing it's wonderful whose name is wonderful a child is born a son is given and his name shall be wonderful and he will be the prince of peace the almighty God the mighty God, the everlasting Father, Counselor. They're the names. And so the story continues as the angel of the Lord is saying, my name is secret, it's wonderful. In Judges 13 verse 20, it says, And it came to pass when the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar, that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. And Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto his wife, We shall surely die because we have seen God. Always hiding the name. And all the patriarchs acknowledged it was the Lord of heaven. <clears throat> and so let us again read in Daniel chapter 3 and verse 24 and 25. And it says, Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counsellors, did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Who was the fourth person? Do we need to spend too much time considering that? It is Jesus Christ was there in that fiery furnace that delivered them and then we read in verse 28 Daniel 3 verse 28 and Nebuchadnezzar spake and said blessed be the God of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have charged the king's words and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any God except their own God So here, Jesus Christ is identified, and it is the angel of the Lord that delivered them. The messenger. So you know the story about Joshua. 
In Joshua 5 and verse 13, And it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as the captain of the hosts of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did what? Worship. And said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servants? And the captain of the Lord's hosts said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. And Joshua did so. So here, the captain, the top official in the army, the chief, the archangel, was there. And what did Joshua do? He worshipped. Have you noticed in Revelation what it says about worshipping angels? Revelation 19 verse 10, And I fell, John the Revelator, fell at the feet of the angel to worship him. And he said unto me, Seest thou do it not? For I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Who would he worship? God. And who did Joshua worship? God. And Revelation 22, 8 and 9 says, And I, John, saw these things, and I heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Then said he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. To really put it into the minds of men that we aren't to worship angels as the seraphim and the cherubim. We are to worship God. And Joshua worshipped at the feet of the captain of the hosts. The ark, angel. And so Hebrews chapter 1 verse 6, And again he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. Speaking of Jesus Christ, the angels would have worship him because he is God. And so mankind is to worship him. Um, are we as humans meant to worship other humans, other men? Can we worship Jesus? Was he a man? He was. He came in the form of a man. Can he come in the form of an angel? Some people think, well, it's strange that God doesn't have wings. You know, the scripture says that God will hide us under the shadow of his wings. And so we can see that God engages with his creation as one of them. He makes them and he doesn't just stand above them like a dictator. He creates them and then he he hops into their realm and participates with them. He did that with us. And don't we love him for it? And he is participating with the angels. But does that make him not God? Because he participated with humanity, is he then not God? These things are very clear in the scriptures And when we read that he is the chief, he is the first of the princes. We read in Daniel 10 verse 21 that he was our prince, Daniel's prince. Is he your prince? Is Michael your prince? If we look at Daniel 8 25... We see this prince, the top of the princes. We see this in Daniel 8, 25. And this is a prophecy speaking of the papacy. And through his policy, he also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. And by peace shall he destroy many. 
he shall also stand up against the prince of princes. But he shall be broken without hand. When does the papacy get destroyed? When Jesus comes. In the seven last plagues, not by another kingdom of earth taking over that kingdom, but by Jesus Christ himself. Because he has magnified, the papacy has magnified himself to be as God. And so it says that he magnified himself, he stood up against the prince of princes. And we read in Daniel 9, Daniel 9 and verse 25, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks, three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the walls even in troublous times. Here's a prophecy of the birth of Jesus Christ. And he says, unto that time, Messiah, the prince. Is the Messiah your Messiah? Is he yours? Is he your saviour? Then he's your prince. And so this great prince, Michael, the archangel, will stand up soon. And when he stands up, like of old, he has helped the Israelites in the past. He has been with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Moses, Joshua, Daniel. And he's going to be with his people in the end. And anyone that is found written in the book will be delivered when Michael stands up. And Michael will stand up when the king of the north shall come to his end. And that's another study in itself. And so, how will you cope when Michael will stand up? It says in Micah, uh, sorry, Malachi chapter 3, verse 1, talks about this messenger, the Angelos. He shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom he delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. And verse 2, but who may abide the day of his coming? Who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. Are you prepared to meet the captain of the armies of heaven? That never loses a battle? That has made the patriarchs, the great men of old, fall on their face? Are you ready to meet him? Because when he comes... He's coming to complete that war he started with the dragon. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And who is the dragon? Lucifer. Another angel. We're seeing a battle between two angels, except one is God. Whose side do you want to be on? Lucifer said, I want to be like who? Like the Most High. I want to be like God. Do you know what the name Michael means? Who is like God. So here is Lucifer wanting to be like God and Michael who is like God. And that is why the war has taken place over Christ and Satan. Over Michael and Satan. And he is coming in Revelation 19 verse 11 through to 15 and I saw heaven open Michael has stood up now and he is coming and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he doth judge and make war his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself sound familiar? What is your name? It's a secret. (laughs) And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. 
And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, clean and white. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, and with it he should smite the nations, and he should rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. He is coming to execute judgment. He is coming to destroy the nations of the world. He is coming to break the image into pieces. And if you are with him, if you are on his side, you will be delivered in that time. A time where all the nations of the world will know this character in real terms. And when he comes, he's not just coming to smite the nations and to crush the political empires of this world and and everything else that is involved in that. But his voice is going to do something. John chapter 5 to conclude. John 5 and verse 28 Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear whose voice? His voice is speaking of Jesus. The text above it, you will see that Jesus has life in himself. That all that are in the graves shall hear his, whose voice? His voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Don't marvel about it. It's going to happen very soon. And we read in Thessalonians 4 verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. Does he get someone else to speak for him? Whose voice was it going to? Jesus Christ's voice will wake the dead. And that voice is the voice of the archangel. Because Jesus Christ is Michael, the archangel. It's my prayer that we can align ourselves with his side of the battle. Because he will win. He has won every battle that he's engaged in. And if we are on his adversary's side, we will be destroyed. And I pray that you'll make your decision for the Lord. Amen.